Hi guys, Max Shank here, and I wrote uh, an article the other day with regard to the large amount of pec tears during the CrossFit Games recently, and I wanted to provide some clarification on some of the exercises and tests that I had in that article. Um, the article went in to talk about the active range of motion and passive range of mo motion gap, and I also talk about um, the problem with kipping at high intensities on an unstable surface. I think one of the other problems though is just a lack of quality programming. So CrossFit is very popular and the goal is typically to do as many as you can as fast as possible and this usually uh, relegates the planning to more compound lifts. So it's really hard to include like pec flies as part of your training routine if you have to do like 50 of them as fast as possible, especially on the ring. So the nature of the competition doesn't really equate well for some of these particular exercises. So I think that improving your active and passive range of motion gap, as well as including some various multi-vector exercises at different positions and joint range of motion. So you're not just doing push-ups here all the time. You're not just doing dips here all the time. You're not just doing presses here all the time. Your shoulder has so many extra degrees of freedom than that that all need strengthening. So there are a couple things you can do. One is a skin the cat on the rings, which is going to build that strength in that shoulder extension position. And the other thing that I wanted to go over was the dip test. Uh, and this can be done on the parallel bars here. Essentially what you wanna do is you wanna pop up into a support position, lower yourself to the bottom of your dip and place your feet on the ground. So I, I usually dip to about here, so I'm gonna place my feet down, and then I want to lift my hands off. Now, if I can lift my hands off, this is a safe zone. But if I were to dip, say, down here, and I can't pull my hands off by activating the opposite side of that shoulder, then what that means is that I'm in a position that my body simply can't control. So if you're flinging yourself up into a position and catching yourself in this almost chicken wing place, you're very likely to suffer some sort of soft tissue injury. So it's very important to make sure that you own that shoulder extension. There are a couple ways to do that. Uh, my favorite is to use a combination of the skin the cat exercise on the rings, which is going to put the pec and shoulder, especially the anterior side, under strain as you pull back through, and then combine that with some strengthening exercises into shoulder extension. And you can use this doing a simple dowel raise with either palms facing up or palms facing down. And what you'll find is that doing it both ways will kind of help switch on different things on the back side of the arm. Uh, I would do this for about 20 repetitions. And once you can do that with nice control, I would add a small weight over in the center of the dowel so you can start to progressively load that up. So I think that's extremely beneficial. Um, essentially, you just want to make sure that your training program is a little bit more complete. So do things like straight arm strength work, like pec flies on the rings. Do things like push-ups, so bent arm strength as well. Make sure that you have a reasonable active and passive range of motion gap, and definitely repattern, or what I should say is, not repattern, that's a silly thing to say. Uh, what you definitely wanna do is you wanna own that new range of motion and layer some strength on top of it using something to push into that. So I could also push backwards into there, like an end range isometric, which is very, common in PNF stretching. So there are a lot of different strategies that you could use to accomplish this. My preferred method is to do skin the cat on the rings and then the dowel raises. So I'll show you the skin the cat on the rings real quick. Uh, don't forget to try out the dip test and see if it even makes sense for you to be able to do dips right now. What many people find is in order to lift their arms, they have to like really pitch over. So it means you don't have good shoulder extension. And I like to start my skin the cats on the rings by doing a little pec stretch in the beginning so I can kind of work my way into it here where it's a little bit more safe. I've got my feet on the ground. I don't think it's a good idea for people to just fling themselves upside down and try to like catch themselves into this deep stretched position. So I'm gonna pull here, I'm gonna lock my shoulders in and I'm gonna lift myself up. And once I build a little bit of tension there, I'm going to drop myself down as low as possible. And I don't have a lot of space here, so I'm gonna bend my knees and then pull with your pecs back through. So what you're doing is you're actually stretching and strengthening that front side of the shoulder and pec 
And then, like I said, we would just repattern, press into something, and own that shoulder extension. So, just to recap once more, make sure you use straight arm strength work at various angles so you're not just doing the same thing all the time so you build up the musculature of the entire shoulder make sure that you are able to contract both sides of a joint in the end range of motion if you want to do that safely stretch using the skin the cat exercise and then strengthen in that shoulder extension using the rear dowel raise so uh <laughs> The whole situation was pretty fucked up, quite honestly. I thought the program design was terrible. Um, definitely not a good workout to be done at a high intensity. But at the same time, um, there are a lot of things I would do differently. I personally think there are exercises that are more conducive to high intensity and high levels of fatigue. And uh, ring muscle ups, ring dips, and things like that are simply not one of them. So I would never utilize exercises like that in a high intensity workout. So just keep that in mind, food for thought, and uh, hopefully you guys implement these exercises and avoid some injuries, and hopefully whoever's in charge of programming gets a little smarter so we don't have everyone's pecs tearing off. Anyway, if you have any more questions, feel free to uh, send any hate mail or compliments or co questions, comments, whatever. Uh, you can find me at maxshank.com, and happy lifting.